Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Uh, welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi everybody, thank you for being with us. We are live premiering this show on, on YouTube and we'll be posting it later on Facebook. Make sure that you say hi in the comments and, and where you're tuning in from. If you're new around here, make sure you hit uh, that subscribe button right here on YouTube. And of course the bell will make sure that you get notified every time we are on. So stay tuned throughout the whole show. We have a giveaway question at the end, which gives you a chance to answer the question to be entered into our giveaway of $25 gift cards. Winners from this show, this show's giveaway will be announced on our Tipsy Tuesday show coming up December 13th. Yes, it is a Monday, but we will announce the winner from this show on Monday, Tipsy Tuesday, uh, December 13th. Tonight we will be demonstrating our second advent project for 2021 and we'll also be launching our second trimester of our Fast and Furious Club Season 3. So you'll get to see the projects we have planned for December, January and February. So we had a giveaway, a giveaway question during our last show last week. So our winner from last week, I asked you the question, uh, do you sew less or more during the holidays? And our winner from last week is Deb Fitzgerald. Congratulations, Deb, $25 gift card is yours. Her answer was, I sew a little more as I like to make some gifts and I enjoy the quiet of sewing to reduce stress. Uh, isn't that true? I love sewing during the holidays just to sneak up into my room and get a little piecing going. It just kind of settles everything. So I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday this weekend if you are in the U.S. Uh, we really enjoyed our weekend, just the two of us. Uh, <laughs> just two of us and two kids, two out of five, and of course, Kobe. So. By the, by the way, hi, everybody. Hi. This is Mr. HB. He's behind the bar uh, running the, the bar. show. Behind the bar. <laughs> well, there's a bunch of bars in here. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, no, no bar, no bar, actual bar. I wish we had a bar up here. That would be nice. It's possible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it could happen. So uh, most of our weekend, though, we kind of prepared for our trip. We're heading off to Germany. Actually, on our way, as we, uh, you are watching this right now, this is my uh, Christmas market store to Germany and then Iceland. Uh, we have a big group of quilters that I cannot wait to hang out with the next couple of almost two weeks. And so we will spend some time in Germany, touring a little bit around there, and then we will head over into Iceland for a few days, hoping to catch those elusive Northern Lights, of course. So um, we will be posting some videos and photos of our travels of course on our social media so make sure you follow us on instagram and facebook uh, but we will be showing you some on our next tipsy tuesday episode which will be a week from today also premiering on youtube and that day is december 7th it will be at the same time 7 p.m central time so uh make sure you are subscribed to our youtube channel and you won't miss a beat we did get all, all our Christmas uh, decorations up this weekend, didn't we? We did oh, good. Yeah. It was a perfect day for you. Sir. Inside and outside, yeah. Outside temperatures, the sun was out, and it was like 40s, wasn't it? 30, low, uh, high 30s. It was beautiful. So we got it all done, so that'll be just perfect when we get back home. Be beautiful. Have, not have to do anything. It's all ready to go. All right, so of course our main main theme of the show is our advent project number two so our second advent project is a wonderful bag called i'm calling it the g easy origami bag so this one of course is it can be two sizes simple and easy and we you, it's perfect for gift if you want to use it for gift giving, but then um, the gifts obviously have a second life uh, and can be whatever. So these, these uh, are the larger size and this is the smaller size. 
The pattern is available on our website, so you can just go to geequaldesigns.com, go to free patterns, and you can download the GEZ origami bags for free. You just put it in your cart and go through the whole process. And then um, the, you obviously have to watch the video, so we are going to play the video for you. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about, briefly about the tools that you will need. You obviously need fabric. So about a fat quarter for each big bag. The smaller bag needs about a 15 inch square of two fabrics. And then uh, you will need a little bit of ribbon, like a yard and a half or so, for or, or cording for the drawstrings. And so you can use whatever you got for that. Uh, as far as tools, I love to use my purple thing. Uh, if you have that, we have it in the store. This is so great to push out the corners when we're turning and also has a little slit in here which you can thread your cording or your ribbon through to push through the casings. Very easy, has a also a flat side to push when you're pressing that piece out. Um, it works really, really well. And then I love my thimbles, my heat resistant silicone thimbles. It's great when we're pressing out the piece and um, talk about thread. You want to match the thread with your fabrics. I love my little bitty scissors by Karen K. Buckley. Um, and I also use the roundup tool that I showed you for the apron. I use that tool to cut the rounded edges of the bag on two corners of the bag. Chalk wheel is always good and some pin and pins and uh, wonder clips. So that is kind of the list of tools that we had uh, that I use for my bags, of course, use whatever you got. But I think it's just time we play the video for you with a tutorial for the g Easy Origami Bags. Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these adorable g Easy Origami Bags. You will find a PDF downloadable pattern under free patterns on our website, geequaldesigns.com, to find all of the measurements. So what we're going to do, we, I have my fabrics here. You need two fabrics for the inside and the outside of the bag, so accent, something that goes well together. You have either the measurements for the larger bag, which I have here, or the smaller bag. So this one is the larger bag. You have two squares. You layer them right sides together. And then what we're going to do is bring two corners together. I know these have already been rounded. You want to bring two corners together and use either a plate or a corner rounding tool. I used the Roundup tool by Terry Atkinson for Creative Grids. And I used the four inch radius side which amounts to about an eight inch circle. So maybe if you have an eight inch plate, you can use that if you don't have the tool. So then we're gonna take this to our sewing machine. We're gonna stitch these two pieces together all the way around. We're gonna leave an opening on one side to be able to turn it inside out. And then once, we're gonna, once we have it turned and pressed, we press those edges of the opening and then we're going to go ahead and top stitch just about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around, around the curves and around the whole edge, closing that little opening. So once you have your piece pressed, we are going to start our origami method. So we have our pointed corners on the sides and then the rounded corners on the top and bottom. So the first thing we're going to do is fold these in and over each other. So here's what a few decisions that you can make. I actually start always by just folding my whole piece in half. I give it just a little bit of a uh, press so that I know where my center is. And then I can know to line up my center on a line on my cutting mat. So I am looking at a line on my cutting mat and I lay this out and you can see the creases are matching up on two opposite sides. Maybe my mat might be long for my camera but I have this lined up you want to do this because you want to make sure that as you fold these over that these folded edges are aligned with a line or parallel with a line so that our folds don't get crooked then our bag gets crooked 
So as we fold these in, you can, like I said, do them almost all the way over each other, or you can do them just overlapping a little bit. This will determine how wide your bag will be. So if we open this one up, this one is big enough. This is the larger size, so big enough to fit a candle or anything like this. So this is the width of, of the bag this way. So I made, made this one pretty wide because I wanted to be able to fit a large candle in here. So I want this one to be just a little bit more narrow. So I'm going to fold it a little bit closer. I'm just going to use this guideline here. So this is four inches from my middle nine, line approximately. And then I fold the other side over. And I also find the line that I need to be along. That's my four inch line here. So you want to make sure that your folds make this even all the way down. And you can always double check it. Just grab a small ruler and check how wide is it here. I've got about eight inches, eight inches down here. It's looking good right now. So I'm just going to pop a pin right here in the middle to hold all of this together. So now we're going to actually stitch with two seams that are two inches apart. So what I do is from that center here, about an inch, and this does not have to be super accurate. So about an inch. So what I do is I line the ruler here with the edge. And then my one inch line is right on the tip of that fold. And I'm just going to use my chalk pen to draw a line here. And then we're going to do the same on, on the other side. So I can just place the two inch line on that, what I just drew and draw another line here. So we're going to just stitch across here, two seams following these guidelines. So as you can see, now I have sewn across here. You can just dust your, uh, your chalk away. But now we are going to be folding, sewing the sides of the bag. So what this does, the more you overlap when you do the initial folding, the deeper the pockets are going to be here on the outside. So outside of the bag, you can like use that as little extra pockets. So now we're going to fold this in half. So that's just bringing this side over, aligning, aligning those curved edges on top. And you want to just, I just like to use clips here. So I'm kind of aligning that seam, those two seams down here and then up here. And what you want to do is stitch just real close to that. You don't need to take a quarter inch seam, just like an eighth inch seam from here all the way down and the same on the other side to sew up the sides of the bag. So now I've sewn up the sides and I'm just gonna, before I turn it, I wanna box the corners. So what that does is makes our bag be able to sit flat. So we do that before we turn it. So what you wanna do is pull this out. It's easier to just go in here with your hand and you wanna go, make sure you go inside those um, pockets. So you're pushing right with your finger into that corner and then you wanna flatten it out. And then you will see those two seams that you sewed initially, they're kind of matching right here across. So you want to just leave it like this and just follow that seam line right across. I'm do it on the other side as well. It just gives you a guideline right away where, where to go with that. So I'm going to stitch right across the corner. I did a little bit of back stitching on each side just to secure the corners, but we're going to just leave them like this. We don't even have to trim them off. So now we just turn the bag, push out the corners, and it's going to be looking like this, kind of coming together. The last step is just to create our casing for our drawstring. So we are just going to fold over our little uh, round edges here. They don't have to go all the way down. 
I just kind of eyeball how far I want it down because we're just going to stitch right across here to create a casing. And I'm going to put a pin how I like it, like this. Do the same on the other side so they look even. Put a pin. And if you want to, you can always use um, a chalk and draw how deep you want that casing to be. So I like to stitch my line about three quarters from the, from the edge. And so I just find a setting where, uh, on my sewing machine, where I can have my foot in a certain place and stitch across. So what you wanna do is start sewing on one side here and do a little back stitch to, to secure and then sew across. And then you do the same thing on the other side. So now I have created the casing on both sides. Remove our pin. So the last step now is to find our either a pretty ribbon or a cording, and we are going to thread that through. So we start, we have two equal length pieces, and we want to start on one side and go through this way and then through the other side. So we have two ends hanging off of this side, and then we're going to do opposite way. So we're going to go in from this side and out to end up with two pieces on that side. And that way, then once I have that threaded through, I just tie off my ends. You can do a pretty bow, but I just tied them in a knot. And then we have our drawstring bag fully ready. You, all you do is just pull on the loops to close it up. And it has this pretty little rounded edge here, decorative to make them pretty. I hope you enjoyed making the g Easy Origami gift bag. What a fun way to give a gift in something that can be reused for longer time. Thank you for watching. Wasn't that a fun and quick project? It goes together fast and it's really kind of adaptable to whatever size you want to make. So I did go ahead and open up my bags just so that, so that you can see the differences in size. So this is the small bag. So the way I folded it over, uh, overlapping it, I would say about five inches. This one measures uh, seven by seven by five and a half deep. So this one is great for if you want to gift like a jar of jelly or any kind of, you know, preserves, anything like that, or like little lotions, makeup, stuff like this. Be really cute for little girls. Um, the larger bag is, these are both made from the larger size. So the difference is I didn't fold this uh, as much over as I did with this one. So that's where you get the difference in size. So this one measures width wise, it's about eight, nine inches wide, and then, but only about six inches tall. So this one is great if you need anything short and deep. I did this one to fit like a candle, a typical um, candle in there. So, and then this one would be a little bit narrower, so about seven and a half, but it is about seven inches tall. So, uh, the difference is just if you didn't get how you get the different sizes. So, when you have your piece here and you're folding it over, so how far you overlap the two ends determines how wide your bag and and actually your tall so the wider your bag the shorter it will be and then the narrower it is the taller it will be so that's the difference so this one I folded almost all the way uh, over each other and then that one I probably did only go as far as overlapping it by three four inches like this so that's how you can kind of adjust your size and play with it and um, I hope you will enjoy making more, many more of these 
they're fun, they're quick. And of course, I didn't mention, if you have a serger and you don't, if you, you know, don't mind the surged edges of the piece, you can just lay these right sides, uh, wrong sides together and serge around the edges. That will make this even faster. So just some options if you do have a serger, which I don't, so I have not tried it, but I can imagine it being really quick and um, easy to do. All right, we are gonna move on to another highly anticipated part of our show. I know you've been waiting for this. The ones that, those of you that are subscribers of Fast and Furious Club, season three. So we have uh, now ready to show you the projects for December, January, and February. Now, of course, the project won't go live until the 20th of each month. So you won't be able to do the project until the 20th. However, those of you that have the nine month subscription, you will now have the fabric requirements for the three projects uh, in your account. So just log on to gquiltdesigns.com, log into your account, find Fast and Furious Club, and you'll find that extra PDF with the fabric requirements for all three projects. That will be available to you right after the show. Also, the projects that I'm showing you we have a couple of colorways of each. And so we do have kits available. We, on purpose, don't make the kits live in the shop until after the show airs. So you can just sit back and relax, look at the projects, and um, then if you wanna snatch up a kit, go shopping after the show. All right, so what is Fast and Furious Club? That is our project club, uh, Quilt As You Go project club. So all of the projects are small projects, ranging from small t um, table toppers, placemats, table runners, and up to maybe baby quilts. So that is kind of the largest size that we do. Every month there's a brand new project designed by me, never before published in your account and you will get the PDF downloadable pattern and a video class of me showing you exactly how to do it from start to finish. And quilt as you go means that you start with your whole piece of backing and batting to begin with, you piece the project through the layers so you're quilting it at the same time as you are piecing it so it goes together fast and furious because uh, all you got to do is put the binding on and be done. So uh, th this also sparks, we have the nine month pro project club where you buy all nine months, but then we also offer trimesters. So you can purchase the whole second trimester. Now we'll be available right after the show. So first trimester was obviously September, October, November. And now the second trimester is available to purchase. Now just know if you purchase the second trimester, all you will get right now is the fabric requirements sheet uh, because the projects will be live again on the 20th of each month. All right, so let's start with our first project. And this is our December project. Our baby quilt last year, season two, was so popular that I really wanted to include another baby quilt. So here is Grandma's Goodness Baby Quilt. Now this one is an adaptation of a pattern that was in my first Fast and Furious book that is now sold, discontinued, sold out years ago. Um, and I've been re-releasing some of the patterns from the book. And so this is one of them. I adapted it to a little bit to include just a solid strip here. So this one I made out of flannel. We do have kits for this version, really nice and cuddly. And so uh, it just goes together quick. This is a great size, it's about 32 by 38. So all you need is one width of fabric. You need a yard of backing. But just know if you're gonna use directional backing, you might need a little bit more because you um, want it obviously to do the length. So this is our flannel kit. And then we have another version, a little bit softer colors using our little ducklings fabric, beautiful yellows and grays, very neutral. Um, and in this one, I did use a directional back. So uh, you have a little bit more of the backing in the kit, but the kit comes with everything, comes with the backing and all the fabric for the top and the binding. The only th other thing you need is batting. So little uh, Grandma's Goodness comes in both flannel kits and the ducklings. So that is our December project. And I 
this goes really fast. I can just see mass making these for donations, for quick gifts, for um, baby gifts. I think it's just perfect. All right, let's move on to our January project. And our January project is going to be a table runner. I'm calling it window seat table runner. This one is one of those that we can adjust the length of this runner to whatever you want. I love the longer length because I have a really, really large uh, dining room table. So I uh, like it to be long but you can easily adapt. And I talk about that in the video class and the pattern that you can adjust the length to whatever you want. So um, the kits will have enough for you to make almost a 70 something inch long runner, but I made mine about 61 inch long. It's 15 by 61. This runner, you know, sometimes it's really hard to use a large scale prints and kind of novelty fabrics for table runners, but this pattern is one of those that's perfect for that. And I kind of designed it specifically for that. So this is our Love Blooms uh, version of the runner and we have this kit available. So I just love that these look like windows. You have the perfect window seat with these arch windows and um, going down the line, just really letting these beautiful, gorgeous prints uh, shine in the windows. So I did two versions of this quilt. I also had two options for the sashing strip in the middle. You'll see this one is just a solid strip in the middle, but you have an option. You have the instructions in your, in your pattern to do, if you wanted to add a little extra flare, you can add a focus fabric here to have a little more accent, a little more life. I did that with our next colorway. This is from the patio fabric line. And so this is another kit, uh, kind of a very modern colorway. I feel like a lot of fo young folks now love to, love to um, collect and grow house plants. So I love this house plant theme. But you can of course choose to do this solid. Like I showed you in the photo, I did another version. Can you show that one on the wall? on yep there it is without um without this strip in the middle so there's both options to do and if you d get the kits yeah there it is without it so it's all it's a little bit cleaner but you know if you want a little extra you can add it or not um, the kits obviously don't have specific fabric to do this but they do have uh enough for you to choose one of the prints to do this if you wanted to our third colorway and um, one of my faves is done with the, uh, oh, what is it called? Um, oh, this, this is something about love because it's Paris and love and I don't, um, I don't remember the name of this kit or this fabric, but that's um, pretty normal for me, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, so I love this because it's all the Paris prints and larger scale prints um, and then just this beautiful teal for the background so you can see like the cafe scene. But this is our third colorway that we have as kits um, in the store for the window seat runner. And you get to learn how to do these illusions of curves to make our arched windows so pretty. All right, so that is our January project. Um, and moving on to our uh, February project. So this one is another adjustable size because we are going to be making some organizers. And so we want, I want you to be able to customize it what fits you and your sewing machine. So I'm calling these the g Easy Sewing Organizers. So let's take a look. So it includes kind of a quilted pad with pockets to put on uh, to rest your sewing machine on. These are really great for to take along to retreats or your sewing days or even in your studio. So you uh, will just adjust the size of this to fit under your machine. I this one fits perfectly for my featherweight and it also will fit for my 301 vintage machines. And so this, this size, I will give you that size in the video, but obviously in the pattern, I just tell you to measure your, your area and we'll work from there. But also it includes a, 
a smaller one. Now this smaller one organizer is perfect to, for your handwork. So you can have it laying over your couch cushion or um, actually take it along in the car because it does have ties. So you can hang it up um, on your, in your car in front of you. If, you. if you're sitting in the back for the airplane, you can hang it up um, on that little hook where the table folds up to have everything there. So it also will lay on your, um, just o over your couch cushion or arm, arm um, and you can have your hand sewing needles, scissors, whatever, uh, little spool of thread, uh, whatever in here. So I, I love this and everything is handy. I made some of the pockets um, with a dart in, in it so you can fit like a spool of thread or some clips or whatever you need. So I'm very excited about this one. And this one uh, rolls up and you can tie it up. So a uh, great little gift too for, for quilting friends. I think this is going to be uh, quite the hit. So we have the kit for it where you'll have plenty of the backing fabric, you'll have plenty of the pocket fabric and the binding, the really cool stripe, diagonal stripe binding, and then you'll have uh, kind of an assortment of fabrics to make uh, whatever adjustable size that fits you for the sewing organizer. So uh, I love I love these. I love this one specifically. It's the first time we kind of do uh, anything other than a decorative item or a, a quilt. So, so this, I'm interested to see what you think. So here is the whole trimester two, three projects. And um, that one is available to purchase now. And um, so this, yes. Uh, go ahead and uh, either purchase the trimester. Y if you want to purchase the projects individually, you will have to wait till the 20th of each month. So let's say you just wanted the baby quilt. So December 20th, when that goes live, and you're able to purchase each individually. That will include the pattern and the video class. But everything is ready now. And, and like I said, the, the kits for these will be live in the store right after our show. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you um, like the projects and are excited to move on, um, but we are going to move on to showing you some new fabrics in the store. We have lots of, uh, I have two new bundles to show you. Uh, this one is called, I'm going to start with lower the volume actually. Lower the volume is a great low volume fabric line. And what does low volume mean? So these are what we back in the day would call great lights or backgrounds. So they are light prints that can have just a little bit of print on them. Some, some of them have a little bit of color. So they all read as lights. So if you like scrappiness and like to mix, uh, have more texture for your backgrounds, this bundle is perfect just to get together uh, and use all of them together in one quilt. It will give you that textured, scrappy background. With, uh, still holding on to that um, contrast and uh, because they are all kind of the same hue of uh, off-white. So let me show you. I think these are really great. And kind of depending on how the bundle goes, we might stock some of these uh, as, they, as they are available in one yard. So this is a great little circle print with different size circles, just a light gray. And then we have this kind of geode print. Again, just a light gray. Uh, we have a typography, very subtle. And I kind of really like that because it's just the gray type and it's kind of too like faded. So you can barely, can't really read it to make sense. But I really love that texture. Um, then we have little branches with a little, just a hint of orange berries on the branches, gray branches. And I really, uh, I really love this. I love any branch fabric and, and berries. I'm, I'm a sucker for those because uh, this would be just perfect. And even though it's orange, it doesn't matter what color you put it with. It's so subtle. It will, it will still work. Um, then we have some leaves and branches on, uh, in the gray as well just a little more tighter. So you'll see kind of the hue difference in, in all of them. 
We have beautiful flowers with just a touch of pink, just a little touch of pink. I love how that is um, very subtle as well. We have umbrellas with some colorful raindrops. So the little raindrops are in multicolor, but you can barely see it. It's really, really pretty. And then we have another leaf print. Um, this is kind of more abstract, I feel like. So we have gray and then a little bit of blue and green kind of tossed in there. Again, very kind of spread out and subtle. Um, this geometric print is very cool. Let me move these closer together. Um, just grays and two, three hues of gray and then just a little bit of pink, yellow, blue, and green. So a few of the multicolored. We have pluses and circles. Again, mostly gray, but a little color in there. And then we have little sticks. I always love a good print like this. Um, has that really modern feel to it. And it's not directional, so it's kind of random. And then finally, some triangles. So darker triangles and then open triangles different sizes, all tossed. One of the things I love, um, all of the designs are tossed except for the direction of the branches. But you know what, whenever you have anything like that, you start turning it any which way within the, within the fabric and within the quilt and it'll all be tossed. So I really love this. This is a great addition to anybody's uh, collection, their stash. You'll be using this all the time. And like I said, we might be pulling out, if they, if they are still available, some of the prints to carry in bigger, bigger cuts like our one yard cuts. So lower the volume is this one. All right, so we are moving on. I have a quilt hanging behind us and it is called, um, it's from our, my book, my first mixology book. Um, so it's right in the corner there, Cricut Patch. And we are going to, I'm gonna show you the bundle that we just got in for this. Isn't this adorable? We have some of the prints in three yards and one yard. So you're able to get some backgrounds and borders and bindings and things like that. So this line is called Love Note. Love Note, and let me show you. So 12 pieces are in the bundle. I really um, kind of narrowed it down as far as the colorways. As you like, as you know I like to do, this is from Moda. So Moda lines are usually pretty large. So in this case, I loved um, these colors. I love blues. It's Love Note. Yeah, my notes may have been off. Love note. Um, so I love these uh, taupes and these kind of a, a greenish turquoise and then the pinks, obviously. So even though it's kind of a, a themed for, for a Valentine's Day, I think this is kind of a any day type of a, a fabric. So I'm gonna start with, it, with this greenish teal. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, background with the greens and then pinks. So we have a smaller floral here with um, the pink centers of the flowers. I just think this is gorgeous. Beautiful to get us into a little spring feel and it, it you know, by the time Valentine's Day rolls around, we're kind of ready to start thinking about spring. And then I love this little print. This is kind of a, a, a newspaper print. And then this one with the hearts. I just love this. Adorable. So then we're going into the more pinks. Um, we have a geometric print here. And then we have the little hearts. We have a stripe, just like a pinstripe. Love this. And then another directional that is kind of like a grid. So four pinks, four greens, and then we have four taupes. So we have the main print with the pink flowers, the small print with the pink centers. Um, we have the hearts, love those, and then the newspaper print. So three colors in the bundle, 
very nicely balanced. And then the additional prints that we have available in one yard. So we have the pink stripe, which I used, um, and used for binding on this. And then we have same, pr same fabric in green, which is not in the bundle. I used that for the sashing on the quilt. And then we have the green main print also available in threes and ones for, um, which I use for the border. And then this gorgeous multicolor, the hearts and multicolor. This is so beautiful. So this is what I use for the background. So these come with a line, love note a fabric line and are available in these guys, these two and three yards and one yards and these in one yards. All right, I did do a fabric pull though. So if you wanted to do another um, more calm background, I, I recommend just grunge white paper. It's a very similar hue to this background color and it will still stand out from the topes. If you wanted more of the taupe, the canvas linen is a perfect color for that. As far as the pinks, grunge mango has a little deeper color but works really well with it. And then the green, I would choose the Moonscape Lagoon has a little bit of white like all these prints do. So it works really nicely. And if you wanted to add a little plaid, I found the diagonal plaid in the uh, pumpkins and blossoms in the pebbles. And it's just a perfect mix in here and you can include that with whatever you want to do with Love Note. So check that out. Uh, we will have a blog post up and ready for you with all the fabric pulls that I showed you. No pull with the, the lower the volume. Because these are all lower volume, you can add any color to it and you are good to go. A couple of more things I wanted to share with you that we have in the store available now. If you're looking for gifts for quilters or just for yourself, our kit in a bag has been very, very popular. We have little JoJo back in the botanicals. Uh, and then an, a couple of new ones that we have available now. First one is our big grab and go tote. So check this one out. Um, I think you need to go in front. So it's so big. So we have the laminated bottom. We have the um, adorn turn pack. And then this awesome print for the inside. So it's a linen uh, lining, but this hand print, which is very popular among the younger generation. So this bag is so great for young moms for shopping or uh, college age kids or anybody. I mean, I use mine all the time. So what comes in the kit, you will get the pattern, you will get the charm pack, the, the handles and binding fabric, and then the laminated fabric. And it all comes in a cute little bag, reusable bag. So it's a great little gift. Um, they will be, Maybe not exactly this bag, but they will be similar to this bag. So just a zipper bag that you can store everything in and then, um, then it's just a great reusable bag. The other kit that we have new is for our little Helena table runner. Really cute. Um, using the Midnight Magic. So you will get the pattern and you will get a charm pack of Midnight Magic, which you actually don't use all of it because um, you have, I used a background with mine, so the light is included. This one is way cuter than the fabric I used. <laughs> I love this one, it goes with the line. And then we have the border and binding, and then an awesome backing as well. So backing is included, so everything is in there, including the pattern, and it comes in a cute little bag. So check those kits in a bag out in the store as you go check on all of the other um, kits for Fast and Furious Club. So uh, our next Tipsy Tuesday show will also be premiered on YouTube as we are still going to be on our tour. So along with the third Advent project, the Travel Pillowcase um, will also obviously be premiered and we'll show you that. And uh, along with that, we will have some snapshots from our tour. I will also re reveal the December Color Club for Goodies Color Club, and we will have a Phoenix slideshow. So make sure if you worked on Phoenix or, Phoenix or are working on it, snap a photo, post it in Goodrin's Quilt Crew so we can include it in our um, slideshow. All right, so 
that is it for us today. We're just going to finish off with our giveaway question. So make sure you answer the question in the comments. Uh, do you like to decorate for the holidays? I thought this was a very appropriate question as we just did our holiday decorating this weekend. We got it all done. So let me know in the comments and we will randomly pick a winner from all your answers that will be announced on our Tipsy Tuesday, December 13th. Yes, Tipsy Tuesday, December 13th is a Monday. It's a Monday, but we will have a Monday show uh, when we're back in the studio at home. It, uh, it's because Mr. HP is going to be going under the knife on the 14th. So be having a uh, surgery on, on Tuesdays, December 14th, and we don't want to miss a beat. So we will be live on the Monday before. Sounds so brutal. <laughs> going under the knife jeez, jeez. <laughs> well our next tipsy tuesday will be december 7th so don't miss it we'll be on youtube again premiering 7 p.m central time december 7th uh of course we'll post it later on facebook so this coming happy friday show coming happy friday show we will be live from germany december 3rd day before my birthday so it'll probably be my birthday, well, close to that uh, already. But we'll be 3 p.m. Central Time, live from Germany, so don't miss it. It'll not be our regular show. We'll just do a little quick check-in and give you updates on what we've been um, up to over there. So that is it for us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you next time.